Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Jeremy here. And today I want to review the Performance Tool Digital Caliper. Can you trust it? Is it worth having? Maybe for a home hobby shop? We're going to find out on this video. So I bought this at my local O'Reilly Auto Parts. It was on sale and it got me thinking, can you trust a part store brand digital caliper? Now this, I believe, just by looking at it, is the exact same caliper that Harbor Freight sells. They just don't have PT on the frame of the caliper there. So this probably comes from the same exact factory as the Harbor Freight one or any of the other generic brands. I don't see anywhere that says where it's made. I'm assuming it's made in China. Um, I can't tell. My initial impression of this caliper, and we're going to test this caliper using gauge blocks to see if it repeats and if it's fair, fairly accurate or what. But I don't see anything that says that it's hardened. It is a stainless steel caliper. Um, obviously, this is not going to be the quality of a Michitoyo or a Brown and Sharp or a Sterrett caliper, but the, I thought it would just be fun to see, can you actually use this thing for anything? Is it worth it? What if you're just a home hobby guy and you're on a budget and you've just bought your first Atlas lathe or something? Can you get by with this until you get a better caliper? So let's take a look. Now, the first impression of this is that it, the fit and finish of this is absolutely terrible. Just holding it in my hand it feels rough. It doesn't have a good surface finish anywhere that I'm touching. I mean, it doesn't look bad on the video, but it feels rough. And it feels very, very cheap compared to my Starrett dial caliper or my Brown and Sharp made in Switzerland dial calipers. It just feels cheap, which kind of is expected for... This was $32 at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Uh, the It drags horribly. I mean, this thing is the worst actual fit and finish I've ever seen on any kind of a caliper. But maybe if I put a, a, just a drop of some, oh, look at that. It's even almost looks like it has some rust in there from the packaging, but it's supposed to be stainless. <laughs> I, I don't know what that is. It's some kind of, it's just dirt. So I'm going to clean that and maybe we'll just put a drop of WD-40 or something there and just see if it improves. Uh, you got your controls here, you turn it on, and it, it does return to zero. I don't know if you can see that there. Even to the full range, it does seem to repeat back to zero. The screen has got a little bit of scuffs on it, even though it's brand new. Can you see that right there? A couple scuffs. Let's check it out with some gauge blocks. You can switch here to metric measurement, which is kind of nice. You can zero it. Do whatever you want to do. So let's test it out. I'm already going to say, yeah, it might be worth it if you're doing really dirty stuff. Like if you're an automotive guy and you're just working on cars in your backyard and you're not really worried about a really fit finish $300, $400 caliper. This $32 caliper is good enough to get under there and check what size your exhaust uh, pipe is or whatever. But let's see with some gauge blocks. I'm going to use a set of Starrett uh, calibrated gauge blocks. Good quality set. We're going to see if this baby will repeat. All right, I've retrieved some Starrett gauge blocks here that I've cleaned up. We have a little variety, and we've got our caliper. Now, we have a 100 thousandths and 3 tenths block. We have a 450 thousandths block. We have a 1 inch block, and we have a 4 inch block. And now uh, I've noticed about this caliper already, just in between filming, is if I put a little bit of pressure on it, it doesn't have to be much. It'll go down minus one half of a thou. See the little, it has a five tenths indicator there, which is kind of cool, but I don't know. It's like you can flex this thing pretty easily to get it to read, to read off. And I'm not putting a killer amount of pressure on there, but let's see how it reads. Again, boy, is it, it just drags. I mean, the, uh, I don't know. I've said enough about that. Let's try the 100 thousandths and 3 tenths block. So we are reading 100 thousandths and 5 tenths on this block. Which, I mean, that's pretty close. It can't go. 
it's rounding correctly to the half thousands level. One hundred thousands, five tenths, one hundred thousandths and five tenths. So doing good there. Let's try a 450. Okay, we're right at 450. 450 thousandths. Oh, I saw the half indicator light up there for a moment. Hmm. Okay, no, it's it's reading 450 thousandths. And again, if I if I put a little bit of pressure, it, it drops down to 449 and a half. You can see that. Let's try a one inch block. Oh. Oh boy. Okay, we've got one inch and five tenths. Oh, we've got one inch and one thousandths. One inch and one thousandths. Let me just wipe everything again. I know these are clean. I did clean them. Oh, look at this. We have an error. It's reading the gauge block one thousandths larger than it is. With pressure, I can go down to five tenths over, but it's not reading it at one inch. Let's see how it does with a larger block. Let's see, we go out to the four inch level. Boy, it's hard to get, <laughs> uh-oh. Again, we've got, oh no. Well, it's bouncing around a little bit. It's reading two thousandths over. Let's, let me try to do it on the table, on the granite table, just to make sure that it's not operator error here. So again, I'm re yeah, four. I got four inches, one and a half thousandths. Let me bring that up here, and you can see. So it is reading incorrectly here. Oh, now I've got it at four inches and five tenths. Let's try it again. four inches and five tenths. If I really were, well, I can make it say what I want. If I press, if I use a little bit of pressure, I can make it say whatever I want it to say. Boy, that would be nice, right? I can just make the tolerance myself by how I hold the caliper. That's great. Uh, four inches. Now it's reading four inches. Let's try it again. Four inches up, four inches and one thousand. So, Okay, so they're not super accurate to the gauge block. So what's our verdict? I guess my assumptions were correct at the start of the video. If you are an automotive mechanic or a backyard mechanic, and you're just using this thing to just measure the size of a, the length of a bolt or, or the size of an exhaust pipe or something that doesn't really require super precision, or, or maybe you just need to try to find, take a quick rough metric measurement, these are pretty good for that. If you're gonna use it in a machine shop setting, I would say you really can't trust it. It's not hardened, so you're gonna get wear on the jaws as time moves on. It does not accurately read. In the smaller measurements, we saw that it did read pretty accurately, but when you got up to an inch and beyond, it started to read uh, plus one thousandths over what the actual gauge block is. So I would say you can't really trust it. Now, if you wanna take, if you can just get by with this for a little while while you're saving up, you know, for a nice set of calipers and you got 32 bucks and you're a home hobbyist and you're gonna just do rough, real rough, like plus or minus five uh, thousandths measurements with this thing, you could probably get by with it for a little while and then check your actual measurements with a micrometer. But uh, I don't know, why, why would you even do that? Just go right to the micrometer at that point. But um, I don't know, performance tool, the same thing that sold, um, in Harbor Freight, I believe, I mean, they I can't tell the difference physically looking at it. If it didn't have the performance tool stamp there, then there'd be no way to tell the difference between this and a Harbor Freight one. Overall, I'm going to say you get what you pay for, $32, and you just can't trust the measurements. Have a great day.